Recently, Fabiano Caruana was featured playing a game of chess against the onboard computer of the Tesla Model 3 car. You can find a link to that video up there in the info tab. And in a moment, I'm going to go through that game for you. Of course, it's not the first time that a grandmaster has played against a car. Well, I wonder who that could be. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But first of all, let's take a look at this game. Um, so Fabiano with the white pieces. I wonder if he'd had a little trial against this computer first of all, maybe. Um, I find it interesting to see how he played. He certainly didn't play uh, kind of safety first as perhaps one would do against a really powerful uh, chess playing computer. He went for it. So the uh, Tesla computer has played a Pitts and Fabiano going for it with the Austrian attack. Of course, there are more conservative ways to play against this. But the Austrian attack still has a very good reputation for white. But here Fabi does something a little bit unusual. Of course, the main move here is bishop d3. You can also play bishop e3 as well, but bishop d3 is the normal move. But Fabiano played pawn to e5. Now, this provokes a crisis straight away. Of course, you have to be very careful when you're pushing your pawns at such an early stage of the game. And here, actually, a very respectable continuation for white is to recapture with the queen's pawn. And, and this endgame, um, after the exchange, actually with this nice space advantage for white, uh, you know, this gives white some chances for an advantage. But Fabi, clearly, he wants to play very aggressively. So the knight is pushed from f6. And here, well, bishop c4, as one might imagine, is the main move. But he played h4, which is kind of an outrageous move, following the, uh, yeah, the trend of, of the moment, the spirit of the age in pushing the h-pawn. Uh, but Fabi, during the video, during the game, said, I'm playing kind of risky chess. I'm ignoring my development. I'm ignoring the traditional chess principles to try to start an attack, and hopefully he doesn't defend. If he defends, I might be in trouble. It's interesting how Fabi automatically says he when talking about the computer, but anyway. Um, H4, uh, I, in this particular case, uh, not a great move. Funnily enough, Hikaru Nakamura has played this a couple of times in Blitz games. Uh, not with success, he has lost against Kramnik, and lost against a much weaker player as well. Uh, Kramnik played bishop g4 here. What a very sensible move. Bringing out the bishop, stopping the h-pawn advancing, pinning the knight. And uh, Navratescu, in an online blitz game, played c5 against Hikaru. Both very sensible moves. And, and it, I'm afraid h4 really isn't justified here when white's development is so poor. But Tesla played this exchange and this strengthens white's scent also exchanges off an active piece so in principle not a great move and brings the queen into the game hmm not great not great getting the queen out very early and fabi continued pushing the h-pawn very sensibly now i start to like white's position i have to say Actually, pushing the h-pawn really is quite a positional um, continuation. I'll, I'll explain why, what I mean in a second. Um, you could push the pawn to h6 here, but Fabi takes on g6. It's, it's the, the sharpest move. And now here, for example, if black recaptures with the h-pawn, then here well we're not going to checkmate black i think that's pretty clear you know black's development is reasonable um so i don't think bishop h6 is appropriate however rook h4 i like very much and for example if 
there are these exchanges, then we actually reach an end game, which looks very typical of Grunfeld end games. If you remember that game that Magnus played against MVL recently, where white has the two bishops, this bishop is shut out of play. Once the pawn comes to f4, you can see that bishop is just ruling down that diagonal. Um, could possibly come to the old diagonal as well, but feels right on g2. Yeah, this bishop doesn't look good. White's centre very secure. Um, and I think having ex exchanged the h-pawns, in fact, it makes it much more difficult for black to break out with this move f6 because those light squares are obviously just too weak. So in a sense, this is a very positional continuation, exchanging this rook's pawn here. But I think Tesla played in the best way, the sharpest way, recapturing the f-pawn to open up the f-file. So now there's a little bit of pressure here. There is a massive disadvantage with recapturing the f-pawn that this diagonal opens. Whoops, I've misfired. Not for the first time. Um, this diagonal is open. Yeah, watch out for that, folks. And of course, the e6 square is weak as well. So although black has a little bit of activity with this recapture on the f5, in fact, positionally, I like white's position very much. This pawn is pretty secure, and that locks out the bishop on g7. Knight c6, yeah, fair enough, you know, but I, I might want to push with c5. So white is very secure in the middle, and that's really, that's a nice situation for white to be in. Um, so after rook b1, Fabi said it's still a very sharp position. It could go either way. I'm still feeling good about my position. If it makes one mistake, then I'll win this one. That's what Caruana said, and he wasn't wrong. Um, and here, well, for example, maybe knight a5 to defend the, the b-pawn. Maybe look at this square here. Rook b5 isn't possible because of queen a2, or at least queen a2 holds is, is good enough. Um, but instead, queen takes a2. Oh, dear. And as Fabiano said, that is a slightly greedy move. Very nice understatement. A slightly greedy move. Well, here, I don't see anything wrong with rook takes b7, but Fabi spots a little idea. Rook b3 shuts out the queen from this diagonal. Very clever stuff. And knight a5 from Tesla. I'll call it Tesla. Who knows what? <laughs> who, uh, who installed the, the, the playing program, but we'll, we'll call it Tesla. And now here, well, quick as a flash, Fabi played knight g5. Uh, this was uh, this is sharply played. Well done. And after the exchange of bishops, you can see that knight is floating around very nicely, looking at these sensitive squares. And the queen is just out of play. In fact, uh, black is still okay here, but now nah, these are tricky moves. You know, rook f5 apparently is still okay for black um, but no queen a1 played attacking the bishop well that's actually okay although looks like white's king's displaced in fact white's king is pretty safe in the middle of the board and this queen not looking great again rook f5 should be played here but instead unbelievably tesla plays knight takes b3 um that's just extraordinary. Queen c4 check. Blocks with the pawn. Blocks with the rook. And at this point, rook takes pawn is checkmate. As Fabi said, that was a relief that it took my rook. It might have already been too late to save the game, but that made it a lot easier for me. Well, you're not kidding. Uh, interesting that, it, you know, basically it can't see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven ply ahead. 
Hmm. So, well, make of that what you will. Um, Tesla, well, up to a certain point, played pretty well. Um, would you really want to be playing chess while you're driving along? That, that's as bad as drinking and driving, I tell you. Not very clever. But anyway, it's a bit of fun. It's a nice gimmick. It's uh, Once again, we see chess being used as you know this this idea that that some the machine is intelligent okay getting back to uh, that story earlier about uh, another grandmaster playing against a car yes let's take a look at that photo again well um in 1993 there was the world championship match short against kasparov here in london and i was a pundit for uh, channel 4 tv uh, for the coverage of the match and well I acquired some kind of fame during that time <laughs> fame is perhaps too strong well I had my 15 minutes of fame let's put it like that um, and on the back of that um, an ad agency got in touch and asked if I'd like to be part of an ad campaign featuring the new Audi A6 car so that involved um, very onerous work, uh, a photo shoot basically with the car and this ad, this photo was featured in an ad campaign in national newspapers and magazines and yeah, it was all, all a bit of fun. Um, I wasn't actually playing against the car, it has to be said, uh, but the slogan was neither moves without thinking and Audi were trying to get across that they had this new kind of computer system on board. Um, as they said in the the blurb. The new Audi A6 is fitted with one of the world's most sophisticated engine management systems. So while Grandmaster Daniel King takes several minutes thinking of his next move, the Audi A6 takes just 0 0.006 seconds. There we go. It was it was me in the photo. You see, I can still do the pose. Uh, my hair was just a slightly different colour um, in those days. That was in 1994. We have my goodness, 25 years ago, extraordinary. Um, the funny thing was, um, after the, the photo shoot, which all, all went very smoothly, really, really nice team of people there. There were a couple of guys from the ad agency who challenged me to a game of chess. So I thought, okay, this 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 will be over in a couple of minutes. And you know, I was kind of flicking moves out, and, and suddenly after about 20 moves, I, I realized I was in serious danger of being checkmated. They were actually quite good. So at that point, I had to knuckle down and well, I got, I got there in the end, otherwise that could have been very embarrassing. So there we go, it seems like there's nothing new under the sun. Um, and as I said, do check out uh, the vid on YouTube of Fabiano against the Tesla Model 3. And Fabi does a good job. Thanks for watching.